This is one of the things Jimmy Garoppolo said. He reached out to Trey Lance. He said, it's hard coming into this league. I know how it was coming from an FCS school into the NFL. It's a bit of an adjustment. It's just different. What I can do to help him, I'll be more than happy. And the way I read that is, I, we don't even, you don't, if you're Kyle Shanahan, you don't even need Jimmy to be more than happy. But Jimmy is in a powerful position here. Because when you are the starting quarterback, as he is right now, we know that because Kyle called him that. You do affect the locker room. You affect, we saw it happen in Philadelphia. There became a split. Right now, he's the starter. It's easy to be that. When Trey Lance finally gets to the point where he's ready to compete, then you don't really have control of the situation anymore, right? Just like Jalen Hurts started looking good, some guys wanted Jalen to play. If the Niners get to that point where some guys want Trey and some guys get want Jimmy, we'll see. We'll, we'll, you know, they'll have to cross that bridge then. But when you are the starting quarterback whose replacement has been drafted, you do have a lot of power just in terms of affecting the energy in the room, affecting you have the ability to, to make it difficult, not just for Trey, but if you make it difficult for Trey, you're making it difficult for your coach. You're making it difficult for your teammates. You know, there's some stuff here Jimmy can't control. If Trey Lance is just better than him, Garoppolo can't control that. But he can control what has been under Kyle Shanahan, even though they haven't won a ton, uh, I would say it's it, the building has had a pretty good uh, I, chemistry, I guess could be the word. They've just had a pretty good um, uniform type of vibe around them that Jimmy could negatively affect if he didn't handle this like a professional. I think Jimmy Garoppolo has a lot to gain. You know, it, I would say in most industries, even ones that pay a lot, it's pretty easy to pivot to another company to do whatever. I mean, hell, at one point in time, I think you could call Abram Middlecoff a little malcontents, uh, you know, with management. Yeah, you could call that. <laughs> yeah, it didn't. It, but it, there's so many options, and it's not, cons, you know, you're not confined to one league, right? Most businesses are not like they're all in the same thing together. Like, you can go a million different directions. In football, there are. People DM me like, why doesn't Trevor Lawrence or Zach Wilson just refuse to show up, sit out and go play in Canada? Well, it's like, well, the NFL pays you when you're the number one overall pick almost $40 million. Check out Canada. They're, they're not only are you not allowed to walk out of your house, they don't pay you any money to play in their league. Can I address so that for like, a second? Yeah. I think from the outside, it's easy to look at the Jags and just be like, what a man. Ugh, ugh. But guess what happens? They fly you a private jet. They fly to a gorgeous facility. The stadium looks beautiful. Everybody that's around you is high level. You're talking to Urban Meyer. Stadium, stadium a little old, but. But I just mean you walk into the facility and they're going to have a bunch of sweet. Now, he did come from Clemson. I'm just saying when you walk into an NFL office, it doesn't feel like you're walking in to like Blockbuster as it's crumbling around you. Like it feels like you're walking yeah. into a multi billion dollar industry because you are. Anyway. And, you know, in his. You know, instance, they brought his teammate, probably pretty a little easier transition. Right. But, you know, in football, your actions, unless you're an elite player like Antonio Brown level, when you act like an idiot, it you can't hide it. It not only gets out, it gets out like wildfire. Everyone knows. And actually, I would say the perception, it gets worse. I think sometimes we end up in a lot of teams don't mess with guys because the negativity by the time of the chain of communication gets to them is like, oh my God, this guy our, this guy around our guys? No way. Not what we've heard, even though it's not probably nowhere near as bad. But every the story just gets – listen, I know I naturally do it. When I hear something, I just kind of embellish it one way or the other, and it can just grow. And with Jimmy, the one thing that it does grow, and probably even more positive when it's like, this is a good guy, man. I want this guy in my room. This guy, like I'd say Mariota's the guy where it's just like, we just want this guy around. Like he's just salt of the earth, good guy. And he can play a little, but you know, I just. I don't think he's as good of a passer as Jimmy. But uh, my point is, but you, Mariota makes $3 million. Like if you just in the it back of the quarterback, year. like a huge reason that Chase Daniels just around like, or Blank Abbott, like we just love this guy around the dudes, love him around the fellas. Right. He knows what's asked of him. Now, Jimmy is, uh, we're talking about a starting quarterback. But if those guys, like if Blaine Gabbert or Mariota was better, people would be lined up to get those guys, right? We just This guy's one of the guys. People love him. Their problem is they're just not good enough. Yeah. Jimmy can play well this year because he has in the past. 
But he can also be like, you know, he was the first guy. Did you mention this? I mean, Trey said this. He was the first text he got was from Jimmy Garoppolo. Mm-hmm. So, like, you keep – Which shows that, that he gets it. Yeah, he but wasn't that, sitting there fired up. Stuff is, we can laugh at it or whatever. But if the year goes on and it's just like, you know, Jimmy and Trey, they like each Again, other. They got hey. around. Like, isn't Alex a great example of just his stock, I would say, rose. Now, a big part of that year, his play had never been better. But I do think he doubled down on, God damn, this guy couldn't have treated the guys any better. And he acted like not just a pro, but th- that, that set the bar in our organization for how to conduct yeah. yourself. Yeah. Can Jimmy act like that? Because if he does, then I think he's going to earn best case for him. People are going to want him. And two best case for the Niners, that if he plays well, obviously people are going to want him, right? Because there's something to be said about at the quarterback position, the last thing in a million years you want is any bad situation, whether that's personality, whether that's like Deshaun Watson, whether that's Carson Wentz. I just want my guy to be like, say what you want. Minnesota never has to worry about Cousins. I wish he could make a little more plays, but it's just he's the least of our worries. Right? We if our defense is good, we'll make the playoffs. He's not our problem. Yeah, I mean he's when they're good enough to win a championship, and he's their quarterback, then he's their problem. And, and the reality is, most people are never going to be good enough to win the championship. <laughs> you know. Yeah, I mean, you could have argued he was their problem a couple years ago. Yeah, they, I mean, they were their, a better their team. problem was like, yeah, if we had Mahomes, we'd win the championship. Yeah. But you don't. Yeah. Like, you, you want a playoff game, that's a hell of a season. Uh, and yes. Jimmy's proven that. Like, if your team's good and you have Jimmy, like, you can win. I think he has a lot. If you just look at most guys that game that aren't going to be on their team, like, obviously, like a DK Metcalf or a B- Hopkins, these guys are going to be on their teams for a while. I'm t- about a guy that clearly is not going to be on the team for probably more than a year. No one in the league to me is more the game than Jimmy Garoppolo. If he plays well and acts right. A hundred percent. Yeah. I mean And the not and the Niners directly gained as well because he would immediately have like Washington football team, whoever just needs a starter, like all of a sudden he has value. Under contract next year too, right? I think the Steelers are a good example. I don't know that Mason Rudolph's good enough to be the odds are that he's not good enough to right be Ben Roethlisberger's. You'd bet against it, I would replacement but Ben doesn't one thing is clear Ben doesn't make it easy for whoever the next guy that's the Steelers quarterback won't be like gotta give a lot of credit to Ben man he really helped me out right it's but just, don't you think that's hurt kind of Ben like right now if they had cut him it's like do we even want this guy around I think it just makes their life harder like that's I think Mike Tomlin's job historically is harder than it looks because he makes it look seamless but Juju clearly that was that's not easy for them. He's back, but it's not easy for them. Juju hurt himself. A B, the fact that you've said this a while ago, the fact that Antonio Brown was a stealer for as long as he was, and it didn't get weird until the very end, credit to Tomlin. Ben, again, more uh, more maintenance than you want your starting quarterback to be, there's no question. I'll give you a good example of a player who's not any good anymore, but people just clearly seem to like him is Joe Flacco. Like Joe Flacco's gonna bank an extra ten, fifteen million dollars just you're 35, 36, 37, 38, just getting to be a backup. Yeah. Why? Because not an asshole. People like him. Yeah. Now, I think his personality might be a little different, but clearly, like, people aren't afraid of him, right? To bring him around their young quarterback. Right. With it, to me, there's something to be said about that. And it's a hard balance. And cool. Jimmy's now has been a backup and a starter. You could argue Flacco had always been the starter. Jimmy does have perspective, right? He was a backup for three and, and a half years. He was in Trey Lance's shoes, kind of. I mean, he wasn't. Directly yeah. drafted to replace, but Brady could look at it that way. Right? Brady did. <laughs> and he did. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and Brady still invited him to the, uh, you know, Derby. The Derby? Party. Yeah. I actually saw some photos because the Derby was Saturday of Jimmy and Tom at the Derby. I'm like, wait, is he still going to the Derby with Tom? I, I saw that too. Yeah, it was an old photo, right? It was old. Yeah, it was kind old of photos. the reddish suit he had on. 